Hi guys, welcome back to Brick vs Japan. This is Matt here, and if you are interested in actually learning how to learn languages, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button so that you don't miss any videos from me. And uh, today we're going to be answering the question, is Duolingo actually worth it? And should you use it for a long period of time? Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. So uh, yeah, let's check it out. Hi guys, before we get into the video, I just wanted to make two quick announcements. I've started a podcast, which you can access from the links in the description. And you can also find it on my second channel, where I will be uploading all the podcast episodes, any clips from the podcast, any clips from interviews and other long form content, such as the Map vs Japan interview uh, video that we did a few years ago and also clips and vods from my twitch channel so yeah if you guys are interested don't forget to go over to the second channel hit subscribe like the videos and uh yeah guys hope you enjoy the video hi guys welcome back to brit versus japan it's me matt here and today uh we're going to be doing a reaction to a popular duolingo video that was recommended to me uh, about a month ago which i never actually got around to watching because i figured this would be uh, a good thing to do on here on youtube and I was originally just going to go through Duolingo myself and give my thoughts on it. And then I realized that a lot of it is uh, you have to go through tests to get to the high levels. And it would basically take a long time to just go through all the lower levels, which I really didn't want to do. Uh, so I figured we could watch this video on this guy's take on it. And um, we can then give my opinion on uh, Duolingo as well and how I feel about the platform. And whether or not you should use it to learn Japanese or any other language for that matter. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so this video is called Why I'm Quitting the Japanese Duolingo Course, an Honest Review. Uh, and it's by uh, Liva Kivi. I'll leave uh, his channel in the description below. A much bigger channel than mine, obviously. But, uh, um, you know, just in case you want to see the original video, obviously go check it out. So, I've been using Duolingo to learn Japanese for over 800 days now, and I've gathered a lot of thoughts about whether or not you should use Duolingo to learn Japanese. And I was going to make this video extremely long again by including literally every single thought I had, but honestly, the answer to the question is actually quite simple. Do you like using Duolingo? No? Well, honestly, then just don't use it, it's not going to be worth it for you. However, if you like using Duolingo, then by all means go ahead and use it, there is honestly nothing to lose. Everything you do contributes to your proficiency to some extent in the long run, and learning- Yeah, uh, so the first thing I would say is this is definitely true, and this is something that I have uh, since come to the conclusion of. So if um, Anki doesn't work for you, and you don't like the way that I suggest on this YouTube channel, or the way that other people suggest if, if you don't like how cats uh from ajax suggests uh doing things or if you don't like how matt versus japan says to do things don't do it it's not going to work if you don't enjoy the process and you can't uh you know actually sit down for hours on end and and do and study and do some of this then you're probably not going to progress as much however if you do like duolingo even if it's not as efficient as anki which i don't believe it is although we haven't you know fully got into the video yet so we'll find out if it is or not um then you know if you like it and prefer it then you're going to progress further with the thing that's less efficient than uh the thing that's more efficient even if you don't uh, when you don't enjoy doing it so yeah i wholeheartedly uh, agree with this Japanese is a very, very long run. You're better off using tools which you actually enjoy using as they keep you consistent rather than something that might be a yeah, bit more time exactly. efficient but makes you want to quit learning. But okay, let's go into a bit more detail as to why. The Duolingo Japanese course, as it stands in 2021, currently has about 3,200 words, 1,350 kanji, 731 lessons, and 131 skills. Okay, so I don't know what the lessons and skills are, but... As for words, I guess that's a decent amount. Um, it's not that very, it's not that many really. Um, I guess it would probably cover the bases of most Japanese words that you would see in daily conversation, but the kanji, that is not enough. 1,350 kanji is not enough to be able to read Japanese properly. Um, it would probably get you about 70-80% of the way there. So it, it's definitely a good start, but you, you need to know all of the, the most commonly used kanji. Um, because there are there are 2,000 or so kanji that are used in everyday uh, uh, publishments like newspapers and they are considered the kanji that uh, the official kanji that everybody uses in in books and whatever 
um, and you need to know those. Those you have to know them to be able to read Japanese. Um, and even then, there are still many, many, many other kanji, um, thousands upon thousands of kanji that are still used that you don't necessarily need to you need to know how to read, but you might at least need to know, um, you know, the, either the meaning or possibly the reading, depending on what it's used for. Uh, but you'll come across those in when you actually move to Japan or go to Japan and visit. Um, and some of them are very sort of niche, so you might not actually need to worry about them too much. Um, but you'll be surprised how many kanji Japanese people know. Um, and it's a lot more than 1,300, I can tell you that. That actually means that the Japanese course is one of the longest courses on Duolingo now. A lot longer than it used to be back when I got started in 2018. That's very and interesting. to put it into perspective, the general rumor is that JLPT N3 requires about 3,700 words and 650 kanji. Yeah. So does this mean that when you finish Duolingo, you're basically going to be N3 at Japanese? No, most likely not. Oh. Okay, I don't. This I'm not sure where he's gonna go here, but uh, N3 is not a high level, really, when you think about it. Um, so if you can't get to N3 after completing the Duolingo course, that's not looking good. Although that depends on how much studying you do outside of Duolingo. And I'd like to say right now that when you use Duolingo to learn Japanese, it's really recommended that you don't use it as the only resource. To bring myself as an example, mm. I also started out learning Japanese on Duolingo. And after about two weeks, I started using the Core 2K6K deck on Anki for additional vocabulary and the Take Kim's Guide to Learning Japanese for Grammar. You yeah, that's probably a good thing that most people should do. If you're just using Duolingo, you're definitely a disadvantage um even personally i never just used anki um, i didn't use any other tools but i supplemented it with immersion and reading and watching lots of japanese shows and i think you know if you're literally just doing duolingo and you're not doing anything else to even come near to japanese or expose yourself to the language at all then you're really not going to progress as much um, whenever you are learning with any tool, the best thing you can do outside of using that tool is getting as much listening and as much reading in as you possibly can. Um, that's going to boost your ability more than anything that can really supplement that. Any textbook, even Anki, um, even Duolingo, uh, the main thing, uh, the main thing that's going to give you the most benefits and the most gains is going to be lots of reading, lots of listening. You, of course, don't have to use what I used, as there are a lot of other resources as well which you can use, such as Vani Kani for vocabulary and Genki textbooks for grammar. Just find something that works for you and stick oh, no! to it. And to put my own current level of Japanese into perspective, I'm pretty confident that I could pass the N3 test right now without big issues. But well, I have taken over 5000 vocabulary cards across various texts on Anki, and most of my grammar I learned through other resources. Not to mention, I've immersed in the language a bit as well. So, how much Duolingo has actually contributed to my Japanese past the beginning stage is really hard to tell. But honestly, I assume that definitely not as much as the other resources. This still doesn't necessarily mean that Duolingo is useless though. I do believe that you can in fact learn Japanese with Duolingo, but you obviously won't become fluent. And that's for the same reason you won't become fluent when you finish a Genki textbook. It will eventually run out of pages and it only has so much it can teach you before that happens. Yeah, so this is the main argument against textbooks. Um, it's just the sheer lack of content that they have. Um, if you look at Genki or if you look at any other Japanese textbook um, or even any Duolingo course or other courses online, they only have a very small amount of the language. It doesn't matter how big the course is. And even as this guy says, the Japanese Duolingo course is the biggest course on Duolingo. Um, it still has a very finite amount of resources compared to what's actually in the Japanese language. Um, the best way to get exposure or to learn the Japanese language or any other language is to obviously get as much reading, as much listening of that language as you can from varied sources, uh, preferably at your level so you can learn uh, from the content you are consuming and then progress from there and go up and up. Um, but you're, you know, you're only being exposed, especially in textbooks, to just very, how would you say it, very foreigner uh, based language that you're going to use. So for example, um, asking how much a souvenir is or asking how to order something at a restaurant. Sure, those things are useful, but they're only a very small amount of the actual language that you're going to, that you're going to be using. 
and they might not even be relevant to you depending on your lifestyle and you know whatever of course you still need to know those eventually you still need to know all the things that are in the textbooks uh, but in my opinion the best way to get to get all that knowledge and get uh, those sentences into your head is to get lots of reading and lots of listening it's just it's so much it's such a more natural way of doing it um, and he did mention he used a lot of different resources to learn grammar personally i wouldn't learn grammar at an early stage if you are below um you know if you are below fluency i.e if you're not fluent yet if you're not if you haven't reached that basic level of fluency then i would definitely not even really think about grammar grammar is something that you can learn after you've reached fluency um, and some of you may be wondering, that seems to be very contradictory. Well, it's, it's not really, because if you think about how you learnt your native language as a child, you probably didn't learn grammar. Sure, you learnt grammar at school, but by that, point you, uh, by that point you'd already learned how to speak and how to understand the language, so you're already fluent. Um, learning grammar is very much a added extra that can sort of uh, boost your speaking ability and um, help you sound a bit more natural and more professional. But it's definitely something that I would avoid in the beginning stages. You don't really need to need, know it in the beginning stages unless you are like moving to the country within a week, right? If you're in that kind of situation, then sure, yeah, learn grammar. But if you're in the situation where you're learning Japanese now for maybe a trip a year down the line or you're going to move there, you're thinking of moving there in the future, don't worry about grammar yet. You don't need to know it. Um, lots of listening, lots of uh, reading will help you pick up grammar naturally as you go along. Um, you will find that you can treat grammar almost as if they're just separate words in themselves. So you can just look up grammar pieces, grammar particles or whatever in a, in a dictionary and you can just sort of get a gist of what they mean uh, instead of trying to conjugate verbs and do all this crazy stuff which will just confuse you and probably make you speak really poorly. Because a lot of language learners who learn grammar in the beginning stages attempt to output too early. And when they output too early, they make a lot of mistakes. And when they make a lot of mistakes, unfortunately, a lot of people find that their brains just tend to uh, uh, stick to those mistakes like glue. And then it becomes natural speaking patterns for them. And then they just end up saying incorrect Japanese or whatever language they're learning for the rest of their life. And they can't fix those mistakes because it's so naturally ingrained into their language ability. Um, that it just becomes a normal part of how they speak. And unfortunately, it's very difficult to correct those mistakes. So personally, I would stay away from grammar from uh, at the beginning and leave it till after you can already understand most of the language. That's how I would do it. However, getting you fluent in Japanese is not what Duolingo is designed for. The true value of Duolingo is getting you started in a language. Because what even is Duolingo? It describes itself as a gamified approach to language learning with short and fun lesson. <laughs> and it tries to make the mental barrier of entry for getting into the first lesson very low. Good morning, people. You don't even need to register an account anymore, so it only takes a few clicks to get started. Duolingo also tries to keep you consistent by having a strike system and a pretty aggressive notification it's approach. Sad. So how I see it, Duolingo optimizes for getting you started in a beginner and casual friendly way, especially if it's your first time self-studying a language. Yeah, I think as a platform, that's a pretty good approach. Definitely keeping uh, the sort of gamified feel to the whole thing uh, tends to draw people in and keep people going. And I know there's that whole meme about Duolingo, you know, have you done your uh, streak today, yada yada. Uh, it's a pretty funny meme, but I, I can understand why they're doing it. They're getting people to stick around and come back. Obviously, they want to do that from a business perspective to obviously get people to, I assume, buy premium if they've got premium uh, accounts I have no idea I don't know how they make money but um, they obviously want people to come back because of that but also to come back to actually keep learning um, so I guess from a beginner's perspective it's actually yeah it's probably great to get people into learning Japanese um, from a intermediate to advanced learner's perspective um, so far from what I've seen in the background of this video like he hasn't actually shown us any examples yet I hopefully he will show us some examples if he doesn't um, I'll look at some at the end and we'll discuss them but so, so far from what I've seen it just seems like every other uh, generic course where you just it tells you a sentence in English and you have to build it in Japanese or vice versa and uh, I personally don't agree with doing that uh, just because you have the whole 
uh, trying to translate between the two languages in your head issue. And then that becomes a problem with speaking later on because you're thinking in your head what you want to say in English. You then have to translate that to Japanese. Uh, that, and then obviously say it in Japanese. And that can take a whole lot longer than actually just feeling what you want to say and then speak it in Japanese like I currently am in English or like how you would in your native tongue whenever you're speaking to anybody. You don't think about what you say. It just comes out right. So that's how that's what you want to get to in your second language. And so far from what I've seen, Duolingo doesn't seem to sort of have that aspect. It's very much a translate back and forth kind of deal. That's what it looks like anyway. Anyway, let's continue. But okay, getting started aside, how long should you use Duolingo for? And why does everybody keep saying that Duolingo is a terrible resource? Well, here's my experience with Duolingo. In the beginning, Duolingo felt pretty useful for me. I did about 3 to 5 lessons per day, moving and guilding one lesson at a time. It took me about 40 hours or 160 days to complete and kill the entire Japanese tree. But even back then, I saw issues with the course and felt like it's better if I focus primarily on other resources. That's why, after finishing the tree for the first time, I've been mostly doing one lesson per day. Now that the port version of the course has finally come out and having finally finished it, I'm glad that the course is much longer than it used to be, however, the main issues have not been fixed. And actually, I don't think they will ever be fixed, because they come from the format of Duolingo itself, not the course. To explain what I mean, let's go over the main exercises of Duolingo, being Japanese to English translation, English to Japanese translation, match the pairs, pairs? Today's words are pear, the fruit, pear, to trim, and pear, meaning two, like a pair of shoes. To this fucking language, man. <laughs> and of course, listening exercises. Just to get this out of the way, as Duolingo is using a admittedly impressive but not perfect text-to-speech engine, oh, the listening exercises are that. completely useless. So that, yeah, that is bad if they're using text-to-speech. A company this big... <laughs> you should definitely be hiring voice actors or a professional because text-to-speech is not real Japanese. It is very far from it. You don't get the correct accent. You don't get the correct pitch. It's just, it's completely just useless. Um, you do not want to learn how to understand Japanese. You don't want to have input from a robot, essentially. Um, you wouldn't use, actually, to be fair, the Google uh, uh, English uh text-to-speech isn't that bad but even still you wouldn't want to learn English just by listening to that um, you would end up speaking very strangely um, so that is definitely something that they need to fix and I don't know why a big company like this hasn't got voice actors that makes no sense so I recommend skipping them or muting your Duolingo completely as for the match the pairs exercises, I feel like they were fantastic in the beginning for learning hiragana and katakana, but now they feel incredibly ineffective for learning new words. And in general, I feel like Duolingo is terrible for learning Japanese vocabulary. In fact, very often I come out of the lesson without even knowing the reading or meaning of a new word, because it was never properly introduced. Okay, yeah. I see this a lot in a lot of online courses. They don't actually teach you... Uh, anything at the beginning they'll just say this is a word what is the answer and then of course you have to guess and then if you guess incorrectly then the question's wrong you move on but if they haven't taught you what the word how the word's pronounced in this case originally then how the hell are you supposed to know how the hell are you supposed to learn that it's such a backwards way of doing it and it just doesn't make any sense to me that they wouldn't uh have the reading on the front of the card or on the on the question as they give it to you it just doesn't make any sense honestly it feels as if i've barely learned any new words at all with duolingo during the intermediate stage to be fair i had already learned most of them through anki but at the same time learning new vocabulary with anki feels and is so much more direct and effective when it comes to the output exercises, they are actually pretty decent. As a beginner, playing around with the language as if using building blocks is a great way to build a more intuitive understanding of the language. However, one of the most common complaints for the Duolingo Japanese course is the lack of grammar explanations, which is also the primary reason why you should use an external resource for grammar. Okay, I, personally I don't think you should be learning grammar at this stage anyway. But if I was the student who wanted to learn grammar, that's very bad. Again, Duolingo, massive company. Not sure why they're not giving dual, uh, explanations for the grammar points. Um, 
That's a bit weird. I mean, a lot of this could be done very easily with just linking to an external dictionary. I mean, I guess they would have to pay f to do that and they just don't want to have extra costs. I have no idea. But um, yeah, it just doesn't make much sense to me why they wouldn't do that. But I don't know. On top of that, during the intermediate stages, oh, as mad. long as you get enough input, your output ability should improve alongside anyway. So, unless you need to or want to output already, I don't think output exercises are that necessary. And lastly, the Japanese to English translation exercises. They are by far the most common type of exercise, and in my opinion are also the biggest issue of Duolingo. Because constructing an English sentence from Japanese is completely different from understanding the Japanese sentence itself. Yeah, that is definitely completely true. Um, wait, do you have to type it in English? I'm learning Japanese this way on purpose, and it doesn't work well with Duolingo. When I say kyo wa nani o shimasu ka, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I can't translate it instantly in my head. Like, my first thought isn't to translate it into English. Okay, so this is good. Um, I think this is, yeah, this is Connor, right? Um, from Trash Taste. So he, he's on something there that he probably doesn't realize that he's on. Um, that's how you should be learning the language. You should be getting to the point where you can understand it, you know what to say, and you know what the sentence means, and you don't know how to say it in English. I.e., you can't translate it into English. You might know roughly what to say in English, but you can't perfectly translate it. That's that, that's fine. That should be left to the translators to figure that stuff out. For an actual language learner who's learning to speak and be fluent in the language, you don't need to know how to do that. Um, so if Duolingo is testing your ability to translate from English to, uh, from Japanese to English, that literally makes no sense. That's like, they've gone from language learning at that point to teaching you how to translate. And that m literally is not what you're there to do. So yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. And going back to his point about the output questions, I wholeheartedly agree with what he says there. The output questions are completely pointless. Um, you don't need to learn how to output at the beginning. Uh, he showed a clip of Matt vs. Japan there, so he's obviously watched a bit of Matt's videos and knows about Aja and knows about this sort of style of learning that um, I teach or show on this channel. Um, and that is essentially that, you know, we've given enough exposure to the language, you're going to be able to output naturally anyway. So you don't need to worry about output. You essentially don't need to worry about grammar as much as well because of that. My first thought is to have the thing first, like a normal person would. You know what I mean? I'm so hard to explain. Right now, Duolingo forces you to translate the sentence either by typing it yeah. or using the word bank. And there is a lot of debate between which is more effective for learning a language, but in my opinion, they are both terrible options yeah. for an input exercise. Yeah, both terrible. I feel like spending time on typing or constructing an English sentence at all is a complete waste of time. Ideally, I'd much prefer to have a flashcard style system, where you just reveal the translation when you're ready and decide for yourself whether or not you got it correct. That is much better and that is exactly what I suggest people to do on this channel. <laughs> there is no point in making an English sentence from the original Japanese. There's just, there's not, there's no reason to do that. I actually think that the sentences themselves are pretty decent. They have a lot of useful variety and can be entertaining. But once again, you're unfortunately stuck with this really inefficient way of reviewing them. There is honestly so much more I could talk about, like what's the best way to use Duolingo, differences between the mobile and web versions and other extra features they have. But at the same time, I feel like it doesn't really matter, because no matter how you use Duolingo, I feel like its effectiveness drops rapidly once you are no longer a complete beginner. So, my answer to the question of how long should you use Duolingo for is either for however long you feel like it, or until you feel like it isn't providing you much value anymore. When you already have a baseline in the language, let's say a vocabulary of 3000 words, you should consider focusing primarily on consuming a lot of Japanese content, through which you can mine words and sentences, meaning that when you encounter words or expressions which you don't know, you can make donkey cars for them. And in general, getting lots of input in the language is probably the most important thing you can do. Brilliant stuff. This guy's obviously uh, looked up and done his research. Um, yeah, lots of input and then what you would likely do is yeah mind sentences um you would go to native material whether it be youtube whether it be netflix uh whether it be uh light novels manga whatever hopefully try and find them in a form where you can copy the text and then put them into anki uh, which is a flashcard app that lets you very easily make flashcards you can edit them and do all sorts of stuff in anki it's a brilliant app highly recommend you get it if you haven't already decided to uh download it or if you've never heard of it 
Um, and yeah, you can make flashcards, your own flashcards, design them the way you want, which is, you know, great for, for most language learners because they obviously, you know, would like to put different things on there, like the reading of a kanji or de uh, dictionary definitions, uh, grammar points, any, you know, p pieces of grammar they might want to put in there and do it like that. And yeah, it's so much more effective, uh, especially after the beginner stage. As this guy says, Duolingo is probably great for beginners. Um, I probably would agree with him. It's probably a great tool to keep you, uh, you know, to get you into Japanese and get you to keep going for a few weeks. Um, and then certainly after you've, you know, you've got used to the language a bit and you've got yourself a bit of a, of a base, then I would personally switch to something like Anki and start just getting lots of listening and lots of reading in. And that's where you'll see the most gains and the most um, benefits. And um, Anki is great. It has so much, um, it has like, it's really good because it has like this whole um, algorithm behind it that helps you to learn more efficiently, which is something that I talk about in my other videos on the channel. So if you would like to obviously learn more about that, check out the other videos. And uh, this guy mentioned sentence mining, which is what, what I just talked about, where you take sentences from native material and put them into Anki flashcards. And I literally have uh, tutorials on how to do that on the channel. So go check out those videos um, on my YouTube channel. And um, there's also a really long post on my blog, which might be helpful, which I'll leave in the description below as well, if you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, just keep watching. It trains literally every single aspect of your Japanese in the most realistic way possible. And as Japanese is one of those languages which is so vast and so different from English, you pretty much have no choice but to train on thousands of hours of content to reach proper fluency. That is true. I don't think Duolingo is completely useless, and I don't think it's a complete waste of time either. But it's best at doing what it's designed to do, to get you started in the language in a beginner and casual friendly way. And like I said before, it all contributes in the long run. So if you enjoy using Duolingo, it's better than doing nothing. However, if you've already used Duolingo for a long time and are a bit hesitant to let it go, despite being at a level where you probably don't benefit as much from it anymore, remember why you started using it. While the daily strike system is great for helping you keep consistent, it can also turn into a trap of sunken cost. I actually thought of going for a thousand day streak, maybe even gilding the entire Japanese tree again and perhaps even getting rank 1 on the leagues feature. However, at the end of the day, I realized that I'm here to learn Japanese, not to play the game of Duolingo. So, after over 800 days with Duolingo, I think it's finally time for me to move on. That's a very good point. Um, these <laughs> ways of gamifying things, uh, gamifying, gamifying, sorry, I do apologize. These ways of gamifying things uh, can be sometimes detrimental to your learning ability and um, how much content you can consume. Um, I had a similar thing with Anki where I used Anki so much that I was on a massive streak. I had... Um, I don't know how many days. I think I was doing a streak for like two years or something. And I only missed like maybe one day. Um, and I did Anki every day. I did like two hours of reps and I just used it a lot. Now, Anki is a great program. I highly recommend you use it. But once you get to the level where you already understand most of what you're learning on Anki, then there's not much point in doing Anki anymore. Um, it's, you're better off spending all that two hours of study time just reading natural native material or listening to audiobooks or podcasts or just using, you know, actual language to actually progress. Um, in that, you've got to basically analyze what you're doing to get uh, good at Japanese, analyzing it compared to your ability and seeing whether or not it's still efficient for you. Um, something like Duolingo is going to be great at the beginning just to get you started. But as he says, as you progress and get better and better at the language, it's going to peter off. Uh, it's going to uh, get less efficient as you go along. And so, yeah, don't get trapped. Don't get stuck into one study uh, method or one sort of uh, course or resource that you're using. Change things up as you progress. Um, always look into how you can improve. And yeah, always compare it with your current ability and see what you can do to improve your current ability uh, in order to do that. Um, so yeah. I think we're actually nearing the end of the video here. Uh, and that's the end of the video. Um, well, check out Leva Kiwi. Um, it's this YouTube channel. It looks like he's got a Patreon and uh, a Twitter account as well. Um, so definitely check him out. And uh, it's a pretty good video. Um, 800 days on Duolingo, that's crazy. I, I, 
Yeah, personally, from what I saw there, it probably looks like it's only probably going to be useful for maybe a month at most. Um, I would personally use Duolingo probably for Hiragana and Katakana, maybe. Um, I know back in the day I used Memrise and um, I used, what did I use? I used some weird um, mnemonics app, um, Dr. Moku, I believe it was. I used that to learn Hiragana and Kanji, uh, Hiragana and Katakana. Um, and then I only did that for like two weeks. And then afterwards, I learned kanji using uh, uh, RTK, remembering the kanji, um, which I have a guide on um, on my blog if you're interested. And I think, I, yeah, I've got a YouTube video on it as well. Um, and then, yeah, I just listened to a lot of Japanese, uh, read a lot of Japanese. Uh, sure, I did some small things here and there that might have helped me, which I'll talk about on this channel. Um, and I did sentence mining, made loads of sentence flashcards in Anki, um, and that's pretty much how I got fluent. The sentence mining and the sentence flashcards especially are incredibly useful um, compared to something like Duolingo because you get to choose the content. And I think that's the most important thing to take away here is that anything that you use from a third party, um, the content's decided for you. If you make your own flashcards or your own content to learn from, um, then you get to choose where the content comes from. Uh, you get to choose what kind of sentences you learn, what grammar you learn, what uh, words you learn. Um, and so you can make it, uh, you can cater it towards your specific goals and also, you know, what content you like to, you like to watch. Um, so especially like if you're someone who's heavily into anime and manga, then by all means learn Japanese from anime, anime and manga. Uh, the Japanese is no one, it's not as different as it, as people say it is from, um, you know, general speaking Japanese. And, you know, you're still going to get the same benefits from doing that as you would by studying audiobooks or podcasts. Um, but you've got to be aware that obviously different content has different difficulties. So, yeah, sentence mining, I think, is great because it can keep you, keep you progressing because you can just, you know level up in terms of what content you use you can start using uh anime that has harder words or more difficult grammar and uh yeah it's just a really good way i think of learning japanese so if you're really interested in doing that don't forget to check out the other videos on this channel also if you're interested there's my patreon uh, i've got extra content on there and i've also got a a bunch of sentence decks for anki on the patreon which you can access um and yeah, from there you basically get um, a whole bunch of anime shows. Um, you basically, I've converted a ton of shows, um, a ton of anime into massive amount of sentence cards on Anki. And you can just go through and add uh, your own definitions to words you want to learn. You can use them in all sorts of different ways to learn Japanese. Um, you know, you can edit them and modify them to your needs. Um, and yeah, you can check that out. Uh, links will be in the description if you are interested. Um, and yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.